keys to the presence of God. I'm going to give you only two keys quickly. Three keys, and then we are done. Then we go to worship. Key, key number one. How do I unlock to enter the presence of God? Number one, doctrine of Christ. Write that word, doctrine of Christ. The doctrine of Christ is called a basic teachings of Christ or the foundation teachings of Christ. You can never enter the presence of God without even knowing R-A-E-O-O in the teaching of Christ. Basic, say basic. Let's read quickly Hebrews 6, 1 to 2. Hebrews 1 to 2. Just write it down, don't open your verse because I'm moving fast. Hebrews 6, 1 to 2. Hebrews 6, 1 to 2. This is a doctrine of Christ. Number one, the doctrine of Christ, write it down, is repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead works. Repentance from dead works. Hebrews 6 from 1 to 2. Hebrews. Say repentance. repentance. Hallelujah. This is the, the when you're going to enter the presence of God, you must repent. Amen. You can't carry the same attitude. Amen. You repent with your thoughts. Yeah. What you've been thinking. What do you think about church? What do you think about a pastor? What do you think about God? What do you think about the move of God? What do you think about the people? Repent. Then it comes to your words. Then you begin to confess it. I'm sorry, Father. I have thought about my neighbor like this. I'm sorry, Father. I've thought about my parents like this. I'm sorry. I've said this thing. Then it goes to your action. Say action. action. Number two. This is part of repent, uh, part of the doctrine of Christ. Faith in God. If you want to enter the presence of God, you must have faith in God. You must believe that God is here and he wants to touch you. You must believe that something is going to happen today. Some people have faith in their pastors. Some people have faith in their, in their, in their material things. You know? You want to be part of the church because it's got a, a certain building. So your faith is in the structure. Why if there's no building? Would you still have faith in what God is doing in the local church? So your faith must not be based on what the church has. It must be based on what God, who God is. Hallelujah. When you want to enter the presence of God, see God as the provider. Not pastor as the one who prophesies, oh, if I can just get the man of God to lay hands on me. There is the faith in the pastor. You must have faith in God. Number, number three, baptisms. You see it's got an S? You see baptisms with an S? You, if you want to experience the presence of God, you must experience the baptisms. Number one is the baptism of water. Number two, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And the baptism of fire. fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. These are, you, if you want to have the presence of God in your life, you can't have it without a baptism. On, you cannot speak in tongues without the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And you cannot be baptized in the Holy Ghost and not speak in tongues. Number four, lay your hands. It's called the time they say, don't lay hands. Then we are missing a fundamental doctrine of Christ. The gifts are transferred through laying of hands. I can't just speak, say, are you anointed and receive? No, I must lay my hands. Because the, the, the scripture says to Timothy, don't forget, don't forsake the gift that was bestowed unto you by the laying of hands. Not pray, not intercession, not declaring. I must lay hands and transfer. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So laying of hands activates the presence of God. When you want people to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, lay hands. Amen. I say lay hands. Amen. You can't keep just wishing and speaking from far. I declare you are baptized. No, bring a person. Lay hands. If they refuse because they have no revelation, they don't receive, next week come on, lay hands. It's done through laying of hands. It's part of the doctrine. Then number five is the resurrection from death and then eternal judgment. Okay? Let me give you last point. Number two, praise and worship. Praise and worship. As we are entering the present worship right now, you can never experience the move of God without worship, without praise. Without worship, without praise. Let me give you one verse. Luke, worship, worship. Luke 7 38. Luke 7 38. Luke 7 38. This is worship. 
And it says, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears. Ah, say tears. Yes. Tears of worship. These are not tears of, you don't have money for rent. These are not tears of, you know, I broke up with my loved one. It's tears of worship. How great is our God. Sing with me. and look 
can make me feel bad. You can sit and look and intimidate me. But I will praise the Lord. Say, I will praise the Lord. Say, I will praise the Lord.
you know, minister, I hear people say, oh, pastor, can I have a deliverance prayer? Oh, I'll give you my song list for prayer. Take the song list as you are listening, kneel down, practice these verses, the Lord shall deliver you. There is no man who is a deliverer. There is no pastor who is a deliverer. I know there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a ministry of deliverance. Amen. But the deliverer is, is sitting in the presence of God. When you come into the presence of God, the true deliverer will come. Because me as a pastor can have faith and lay hands on you. You fall, you get up. Two days you are back to sin. But if the Holy Ghost touch you, what happened to the things you used to do? What happened to the weakness you used to have? Why did they vanish? Was it a pastor praying for you? It's the presence of God. Can you pray in the Holy Ghost for a second? <laughs>